Hey, hope you're well. Uh, in this one, we're going to do a quick workshop tour. Uh, I've been talking about doing a workshop tour for a long time. The last one I actually did was in 2017, six years ago, when the general makeover started. Actually, a couple of years ago now, 2021, as I was transitioning from doing regular cabinetry to, to YouTube cabinetry, I was trying to tidy this place up a little bit, make it a little more YouTube friendly rather than just a regular jobbing workshop. Uh, and I said at the end of that, uh, when I did the draw unit down there, that that was the, that was the last bit of cabinetry to do. And then I'd be finished and then I'd do a tour. Of course, since then I've got the, the little saw has come in, which is fantastic. Uh, but of course that means that uh, there'll be some more cabinetry to come as well. But I'll leave that for another day. Let's get a quick tour in now and show you the state of things as they are. Right, we'll start in the room next door. If you don't know, whoops, if you don't know the story, this is my, uh, the only workshop I've ever had. So I ran my cabinetry business from here for close to 20 years. Um, it is, it is inadequate in many ways, apart from two critical components and that's cost and convenience. If you don't know, I'll just pop you outside for a sec to show you. Um, this is directly across the street from where I live. Yeah. Uh, that's my house there with the green hoarding up. As, as some of you may know, I'm getting some building work done. I'm not actually not actually living there at the moment, but the workshop itself uh, is almost exactly 300 square feet, six meters just over end to end, and five meters just over side to side. Unfortunately, with this thumping great wall in the middle so it's very much split into two halves. Um, I sorted that out when I was working as a cabinet maker by having this half as storage and drying and all that sort of stuff and then in the main half of the workshop I had this as the workspace and then as I started doing YouTube, as I started doing YouTube uh, it sort of changed slightly. I'll give you a quick walk around tour of this lot. This side is a bit of a dumping ground, it has to be said. Um, we've still got material storage and stuff here, uh, but we've got, you know, p projects on the go. We've got stuff I've been given, boots for uh, when we're going across to the house, the DIY MFT. If you ever want an idea, for a video series that involves, or if you ever come up with an idea for a video series that involves having a completely spare workbench that you need to store and bring into the shot, don't do it. It's a terrible idea. And the rest of this is storage. I get sent a lot of stuff, so I do try and keep it reasonably organized. This is organized, thank you very much. And then there's just general bits and bobs from, you know, endless ethernet cables and all the other guff that you have and a little bit of a dumping ground down there of former projects and things. Uh, endless paperwork up at the top there which I'm obliged to store and I do like a box. I do tend to keep all my boxes. Um, bits and pieces. Uh, I'm finding odds and ends all the time here. Uh, old style jigs which will be going along soon and some uh, by the time you see this some uh, some seconds of the square enough clamping guides, uh, which will be up for grabs, uh, will have gone already uh, to 10 minute workshop plus members. Uh, this sort of two benches used as desks and the computer kind of idea came about when I was doing all the fulfillment of product orders myself. I don't do that anymore. That's all handled by somebody else. But it just kind of stayed because it is occasionally convenient to have a computer here. I don't edit here, but it's sometimes useful if I'm 
shooting a thumbnail or if I just quickly want to check something on a bigger screen than is on my camera monitor, it's quite nice to just to be able to pop the card out and put it in a computer and have a look at it at a decent size uh, so that you can see that the focus is all right and all that sort of thing. Let's go back into the main room. Yeah, this is just kind of, you know, storage and, and space and, and stuff. I got rid of most of my ladder collection a little while back. Uh, I've got some guide rails and stuff here. These are things that I've purchased. I've got a couple of ideas for products that will need to fit on several different guide rails. So I've got the DeWalt and the Metabro. I've got the uh, uh, Maffel ones in there. I've got the Cheap and Cheerful XL uh, Vestal. I've got the Bosch and the Maffel one for the Dowler. And then all the ones that come with the, the various saws that I have. Um, let's switch you on to the bigger camera. Okay, so back in the main workshop room. This has always been the main workshop room. Uh, it's about the size of a single UK garage, uh, eight and a half feet wall to wall, and almost exactly 20 feet long, just under. Um, so it's very relatable from British standards. Normally, if you manage to carve out a little bit of workspace for yourself, you might get sort of half as much of this with a tumble dryer and a freezer stacked up on one other end. So I say it's very, it's a very relatable space. I do get people sometimes say, you should get a bigger workshop. Yeah, I would have loved to have had a bigger workshop back in the day when I was doing cabinetry work for clients. Uh, but you make the most of what you have. And as I say, it's incredibly convenient and extremely reasonably priced for where it is. So the workshop generally hasn't changed really that much. We've got the, the MFT layout. Turns you around a little bit. Uh, run of benches here with the MFT in the middle. This is the DIY MFT. Most, a lot of what I'm going to show you actually has been this, the subject, the topic of other videos. So rather than link to all the individual videos, I'll put a playlist with the workshop progression makeover type stuff in it. So the DIY MFT came along uh, after I'd done the benches, I think. Uh, I, did the, I did three initially to kick off the, the start of the makeover. I did some rather ineffective soundproofing, but I did tidy up that wall at least. I put new lights up and I redid the benches in this uh, uh, grey MDF. Uh, the lights are changed, the duty be changed, change the lights every couple of years. These are daylight uh, tubes, uh, daylight panels, nothing, nothing special. They're not special photographic ones or anything, they're just sort of 10, 12 pound a piece. Uh, there's nine in here, so it's good and bright. And I usually buy 10 or a dozen just in case some of them go. And when these are finished with, they go into the room next door. And you can see some of them are uh, flickering quite spectacularly in here because they've only got cheap little drivers in them rather than the decent ones that you need for flicker-free video production. Um, so yeah, lights, benches, ineffective soundproofing. And then the DIY MFT. The DIY MFT was the one that I made with the IKEA curtain track. Again, just a little bit of a, a cheaper way of getting some extrusion. It's the only extrusion that I found that would fit the Festool uh, rail hinge. And since then, of course, I've made my own rail hinge, uh, which is working extremely well. A few other bits and pieces I've done. I've got the uh, shelving up here. I just had sort of ragtag collections of shelves. So I made a basic build shelf, uh, shelving unit here. And it's working out pretty well. I think the only thing I might change is put an extra shelf in there, but I can add that in fairly easily. I've changed this little bit for the overhead shots. Um, I've got a little magnetic tripod mount now, which is good because it means I can get down much lower or indeed get much higher. And in fact, if I use, uh, I'm using the little Insta360 
Go 3, which are the actual the camera module pops out and is magnetic. And I can actually just pop that up in the ceiling there to get a very high overhead shot. I uh, don't think I've ever used it, but it's interesting to know that you can. And then it just sort of pops back into the mothership where it continues to be a, a regular GoPro style action camera with a flip up screen and all that, all that other goodness. Um, so yeah, that was pretty good. The lights are good. I did these shelves at the back here uh, for the routers principally, or well, obviously we've overspilled <laughs> onto the uh, bench top. I do have a lot of routers and they all do different things. Um, I'm very much liking the OF 1400 that I bought recently. Uh, I've bought the vast majority of them, I think one or two of the trend ones. Uh, the Capex is still in the same position as it was. The bandsaw's changed and has moved along a little bit. Uh, the router bench uh, has changed. Obviously I did a makeover on that not so long back uh, with the birch plate drawers and things to go with it. The motor is the AUK motor from Woodworkers Workshop and I've got the GSM lift in that as well. Again good solid lift. No issues with any of that sort of stuff. Uh, the little Festool table saw has worked out very well, is working out very well. I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, you know, a couple of little niggles, but no major issues. And it is absolutely delightful to use for those small little trimming cuts. One of the biggest changes I've made since the previous shop tour was this record power air filter unit. Looking back on video 066, the last time I did a workshop tour, I had a couple of sort of bathroom fans, <laughs> which were completely inadequate. Uh, for the sort of space uh, that I have. No, it's, it's, I, I am denied about getting this one for a long time. I thought it was too big, it's too expensive. It's actually great. I'm really, really pleased with it. Very happy with, uh, with how that's worked out. One of the things that has changed quite a lot uh, in recent years is the dust collection, the dust extraction. I previously had a big old Festival extractor under the bench here, which ran through a boom arm, and then that boom arm would reach everywhere. As I've become, you know, more more proficient and get more money to buy more gear, I've gone for dedicated extractors at each point that needs them. So I've got the new uh, CTL MIDI with the Bluetooth connection under the cordless table saw because that makes perfect sense. Um, to go with a, a, a cordless saw. I've got my original MIDI from 2006 serving the uh, router bench. That hose does feed through from the back. I've just been chopping and changing it a bit. And then down here I've got the CTL22 which I used to have another bench there just doing the capex. And between them they cover most of my dust extraction needs. I do have a little CTL SIS, uh, which I can use as a, a localized one, but the extractor from, excuse me, the hose from the MIDI extractor here reaches around to most of the places that I'm likely to need it. It's interesting, I've had a couple of people mention, oh, since you got rid of the boom arm, that must have been so inconvenient not to have that anymore. It was convenient for actually making stuff, but it was really inconvenient for making videos because the, the hose was always hanging down in the way of the camera. Whereas at least this way, yes, it's sort of on the floor and I've got to be a little bit more mindful of it, but it's on the floor out of the way and not in the way of me when I'm shooting videos. So moving around a little bit, uh, looking back the other way, uh, under here we've got the little compressor, which is still doing sterling service. Uh, there's sustainer storage and all that sort of guff under this end of the bench. A mini 
avenge of shame at this end where I've just sort of stuff gets dumped. Um, this lot down here, this storage is working out really well. Uh, very pleased with all that because it keeps everything contained. Um, I'm not really using the battery nail guns much. Um, now I've got the compressor. I don't really have any need to go out on, uh, on site and use nailers. So decide what to do with those. And then up here, of course, we've got the, the saw wall with uh, drawers other end. One of these, I think this is the original, yeah, 2006 Festool plunge saw that I bought. Um, I bought another one a couple of years later because I realized that I was so dependent on it with the MFT and everything uh, in the workshop that if that ever died on me, I'd be in real trouble. So I bought this one from 2008 and then I got the newer one when that came out. And then the others have just been sort of added to the Triton was gifted and the Evolution. But then the McAllister and the Titan and the work zone are all ones I've bought. And I bought the Maffel and the Makita to do a video with them, a comparison, not a comparison between them, but a mid-range, new or quality used type of video. The problem is trying to decide what you'd call a mid-ranged tool. There's, there's another video to be done on that, I think, because there, there doesn't seem to be a mid-range anymore. You've either got entry level supermarket stuff or you've got you know the, the the big six kind of thing so yeah there's that and then of course we get onto the the handheld jointers uh the festival domino uh, again the original is still going strong 2006 i bought that so much money at the time and yet you know i could probably get as much for it today as i paid back then i uh, got the Lamello Zeta P2, lovely tool, just not happy with the fittings, fixings. Uh, bought the Maffle Dowler, one of the original Dowlers, uh, to do a comparison with the Triton Dowler. I've still got to do a fixing your Triton Dowler video, I will do that soon. And then I bought the uh, bigger Domino as well, the XL, um, because I have a couple of ideas. For a jig, let's just say. So that's the general sort of. Whoops. Sorry, talking while moving. That's the sort of general state of the workshop as of sort of late summer, 2023. Mostly complete. I don't think any workshop is ever genuinely fully finished. Um, but I'm very happy with how this space has worked out for my needs. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Bit, of, bit more work to do on the table saw. Out the table, side table of some kind. A couple of little projects to come. Uh, Non-workshop projects for a change. And then a couple of other little things to do in here as well. But I'll get into that in a future video. I'll call this one done for now. I hope you enjoyed the quick workshop tour. Uh, thank you so much for taking a look. I do want to say a big shout out and thank you so much to my channel members who have been living with these makeovers, with these improvements for a couple of years. Uh, if those sort of behind the scenes and over the shoulder kind of videos uh, appeal to you, then we'd love to have you on board and taking part. There's more details at 10minuteworkshop.com or you can sign up directly at 10minuteworkshop.plus as a plus member. I do a couple of videos a week for the channel members and uh, they're more of this kind of slightly looser, less structured vlog style videos. Anyway, thanks ever so much for taking a look. I'll call this one done and I'll catch you again very soon. All right, take care.